Hi, I'm Nicholas Kelly, and welcome to this case study on how to design an actionable business performance dashboard. Now, if you're like me, I'm sure you've heard all the buzz around AI and machine learning, and I certainly get enough of it from my clients who want the latest and greatest. However, when I ask them, are they able to measure their net margin and gross margin and even profit and sales right this second, I usually get a no. So what that tells me is, even if they were to do one of some of these more advanced analytics engagements, they wouldn't be able to measure the success of it, the impact it would have on the business if they can't measure the fundamentals. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today for this exercise. In this case study, we're looking at the challenges faced by Generic Company Incorporated. Now, like any business, they live by their margins. Though it takes weeks to pull together an accurate report for the management meetings. They had three primary problems. They had over 10 different data sources. Their numbers didn't agree and also the people didn't agree on the metrics and also fundamentally their problem was not being able to see their profit and margins. Whenever I design a dashboard, I like to boil the objective down into one sentence. For this one, we want to consolidate all our data, reports, spreadsheets, sales and operational data to have a single source of truth of how our business is performing. When we look back, when we've completed the project and we've completed the wireframe, we can see if that dashboard satisfies that objective. So we figured a path of maximum involvement would be the way to go. We would surface objections early and often in order to make sure we we're maintaining alignment as we went through, but also we wanted to catch everything before we went to development. It's gonna be way more costly to deal with those objections during the development phase than it is during a early wireframing phase. We're gonna focus on two parts of the process that was used in this engagement based on the enterprise dashboard process. We'll start with personas and we'll move our way to wireframing. Before we get there, we're gonna look a little bit about best practices on dashboard layout, how to move from a persona and KPIs down to charts and make them actionable and being able to have some sort of resolution at the end. So we can make sure we're maintaining that business value that we'd talked about in the objectives earlier on. As you might expect, there's a bunch of different people involved in this sort of engagement. However, it's the group on the top right, which ultimately became just the one persona, the business stakeholders, executives, and end users. They're all one on the same. We had a BI developer involved so they could be in the room to understand why these decisions were being made. So when it came time for development, they had the inside line to it. The consultant was myself. A little bit of an unusual situation here, which was the IT manager was not involved, should have been involved. The political environment did not allow that to happen. And I will only push back so far on that. And um, so this is the kind of grouping that we're going to build a persona for. We've brought it all together in this one persona. You can see it's that group of three that we have along the top. It's a blend of the executive, the business stakeholder and the user persona. We've just come up with a name, Michael Knight, good name to have. Keep a really simple professional background. Remember, this is an aggregate of a bunch of different people. So we're trying to keep it sort of an average. I would have interviewed a number of folks to get to this point. Key characteristics, just at the top three, we're looking for goals, vitally important at this stage. We need to establish what the goals are. What are their challenges? Can we solve any of those? And then what are the typical metrics they look at? We wanna know what they tend to look at now, doesn't mean that's what they should look at, but we need to make sure we're addressing what they currently look at because if we miss those out in our solution, that's probably gonna be the first complaint we're gonna have. I also like to throw in a quote here. It might be something that everyone's aware of, but sometimes it does surface new and interesting things. The next steps in the process help define what questions need to be answered, running them through some scenario maps, grouping them into tabs and doing data and technology checks. We're gonna jump back in after those steps straight to the wireframing part. To do that, we need to understand the dashboard layout. And I'm gonna show you the layout that I've been using on about 70% of my dashboard projects seem to fit in this mold. It works very well. It works particularly well for any sort of business and operational type dashboards. I wanted to touch on the basics of storytelling that I use for those folks that are not familiar with my process. Once upon a time, there was a persona, this cast of characters, one day stuff happened. So KPI turns orange. Because of that, there was some impact. We can see what that impact is further down on the dashboard with the charts, and it may impact multiple charts. Because of that, some other impact. Until finally, action. We're able to do something. There is a path to action and there is a path to resolution on the dashboard. This is what you're gonna see manifested in the layout of the dashboard. Moving to the dashboard layout itself, you can see the story starts at the navigation level. This is defined by the persona, always designed first for the persona. 
We move on down to the story highlight. Do I need to act? This is the rising action. This is where our KPIs are. You can see over on the right. And then moving down, we've got four charts, story resolution, and what action should I take? So a very, very direct path to action and being able to resolve things. Taking that a little bit further, you can see on a more realized version of this dashboard layout, we've on the summary tab up the top, now this is designed by persona, so that tab will make sense to a specific persona. You can see in our KPIs, we got one that's orange and we're looking down for the dashboard, where else is orange? And that's gonna tell us where the impact is and what we can do about it. Ultimately, you can see here, we're getting down to an action and that is to call a supplier and ask why we were short on inventory for three product lines. Within seconds, we're getting down to action and resolution. Jumping straight into the wireframe, I'm using the dashboard wireframe kit here to quickly put together the visual. Now this is going to be a distillation of all the previous steps up until this point, which includes obviously the interviews, the personas, crafting those questions that need to be answered for those personas and then breaking them down into what you can see here. Now this is the sort of presentation view of the dashboard. We're gonna look at the meta view that helped us get here. But let's quickly have an overview of what's going on. So we've got our KPIs at the top. This is the light blue. We're seeing there's sales, 7.8 million. We have our profit of 1.3 million, net margin of 14.5. We're showing our top products. Now that came out of the interviews that was a, a little bit unexpected, but that's what came out. That was a scene, okay, we really need to see how those top three products are stacking up. Now, how does that relate to those charts further down? We're gonna see that in the next slide and the meta information for these charts. Now we go down to the four charts down here. So, and I tend to like to put the title in the form of a question. And that's just in case there's folks who are maybe non-technical or are new to the dashboard, that they're getting it in plain English what it is that's being solved here by this chart. So the first one here, who are our highest value customers? Very, very simple to understand. And we can just see a breakdown of that. Number two, chart number two over here to the right, what are our monthly sales by product? So break down a product. And obviously that's gonna tie up to the um, top products up there on the, the, the top right KPI, but also it's gonna have an impact on the margins and profit as well, of course. Then chart number three, what locations are most profitable? So that's just a map just showing us out of all our um, offices and sales locations, which ones are doing the best here. And then the final one, what's our product inventory uh, versus our sales forecast? And that one's fundamentally important. That's the one that's gonna lead to the most type of action. Over on the left, you see the filters, uh, just fairly standard stuff. So, you know, it's a, it's a product company, they sell products. So we've got a list of our products there. Uh, we also sell globally, so we have it broken down by region. You could do it by country, you could do it by state or by county. And a breakdown of the customers, in this case, they have customer segments. So they wanted to see uh, all the metrics, being able to filter those by customer. The nice thing about the dashboard wireframe kit is that the cards are two-sided. So we can just flip over to the other side. Now this is really, you're gonna to get to see the inner workings of some of these steps that came beforehand in the process that allowed us to create these, um, the, these sides of the cards here that we're looking at. So we're seeing uh, KPIs, let's look at the top here. So you can see on the flip side of a KPI, you can see when does the color uh, change so we see you got a KPI. So we say we've got our 7.8 million there, thereabouts for our uh, sales. So when does that change color? Well, if it goes under 5 million, it changes color. And you can see then what charts to reference when that happens. In this case, it's reference all charts down below. Now, a bit more of a nuanced one is gonna be our profit, our next KPI there. So when does that change color? Well, when it goes under 1 million. And what do we reference there? Well, it's it's very specific. We're gonna look at chart four. That's the one it's tied to. So if we wanna solve our problem and figure out what's going on there, it's chart four that we look at. Um, that's the bottom right. Next KPI. So if our margins go under 5%, we're gonna make it orange. And the one to look at there is going to be chart two. And then the final one, not applicable. And it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen when you don't necessarily need a color change and maybe you're not gonna do a whole lot about it, but in this case, it's chart four that's also gonna help us reference that. Moving onwards down to the charts here, there's two fundamental criteria that help us get to an actionable business dashboard, something that has value, value to the business. And those two things are putting it in this form of a question, what questions being answered, 
and what is the action to be taken and under which conditions. If we can satisfy those two criteria, we've got a very, very valuable chart. And it doesn't mean you have to always have an action tied to it. It could be an informational chart. But if you get both of these, you know you're onto something good here. So if we look at the first chart here. The question is, what are the sales for each customer? And then what's the action? Well, it's to trigger an email to the sales department when customer sales drop under 30% year to date. Now, what we're getting here is some nice insight into the thinking behind it. Just by sharing this as a, as a photo to the developers or whoever's building the dashboard, they're already knowing what's going on and what's the business logic behind it. So they're not as in the dark as they usually are. And we're not going to go into the rest of these charts here, but you can also see if there's some detail on the filters here. If we look at the first filter, show at least five products, scroll for more. So it's you're basically communicating to whoever's going to be building this dashboard. Also, you could use it as a, let's say you're a manager, you're an executive, and you don't necessarily get into the weeds too much. You can use this, fill this out, and then share it with the folks to, who are going to be developing it for you. The beauty of the wireframe is that you can easily make changes to it and it can serve as a visual requirements document. Now, since there was a lot of politics involved in this one, we actually used the wireframe as a sign off document before we went into development. So we could always refer back to that and say, look, this is what we agreed on. We're not making changes in development right now. However, we can implement them in version two. So it's always important to have that level of mediation where you can say no, but also we're going to take in your input and we'll put it into a, a subsequent iteration of the dashboard. I hope you enjoyed this case study of designing the business performance dashboard for Generic Company Incorporated and that you can see a way to start to apply these principles to your own dashboards. Now, while you don't have to use the dashboard wireframe kit, of course, you can use sticky notes, whiteboards, pens, paper. It does make the process a whole lot faster and it actually costs less than what it would take for you to do your own templates anyway.